This is diabetic and non-diabetic meatloaf. And as you can see, this is the diabetic and this is the regular. And you cannot see a difference between the two. And they taste the same too. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. Hello everybody. Today we are going to make diabetic friendly meatloaf and regular meatloaf for non-diabetics. You want your oven set at 350. I have one pound of burger and one large onion. I don't need all of it. I got it cut also for some potatoes I'm making. We're going to use about half of it, so approximately one small onion diced. Now I used to put your onion right in on top of your meat. I used to also dice green pepper and put in my meatloaf uh, when I got together with Jay. We want one large egg. Okay. We want one large egg and we're going to put that right in on top of the onion and the burger. We also want, you can use fresh garlic or you can use pre-diced garlic in a jar. It works fine. Approximately one heaping forkful one and a half, one, one and a half, depending on how much you like garlic. I put one fork per pound, approximately. We're going to add to that salt. Approximately a teaspoon. And we're going to add pepper maybe a quarter of a teaspoon and we have seasoned salt. I'm adding probably a teaspoon or more depending on your taste and a little bit of thyme. Not a lot, just a little bit just to pump up the flavor and I am going to mix this. I hate touching meat. Ugh. I know you're like, well, where's, how's this meatloaf? Where's the breadcrumbs? Well, I didn't grow up using breadcrumbs, so we always used crackers, and that's what I've continued to use. However, crackers aren't exactly diabetic friendly. So because I'm making this meatloaf two ways, I'm mixing it before I get my binding uh, not the egg binding, but the crackery breadcrumb binding. Now, I am going to make a little bit for myself. So once I get that all mixed, I'm going to take approximately a handful out, put it in my loaf pan. Depends on how much of this you want to make versus the diabetic version as to how much you want to take out. Set that aside, and in this, I don't want to add the crackers directly into the bowl. I have saltines crushed up. I don't want to add this directly in the bowl because this is not diabetic friendly. So I'm just going to mix it in here rather than dirty two dishes. And I only need enough to absorb up the moisture from the egg. That's perfect. And once I get it where I want it, I push it up into the loaf pan. Put a little canal through the meat, through the top of it. And then we're going to set that aside and work on our diabetic version. I have here oatmeal in place of crackers or breadcrumbs. 
This is quick oats. You can use old fashioned rolled oats. Pour in just enough to absorb up the moisture. If you don't have enough, add more. And when this bakes, this oatmeal will pretty much, you won't even see it. It'll be non-existent and you still have a good meatloaf flavor. Now we're going to put this in the other half of our meatloaf pan. We're going to press it out. butt right up against the other. They won't hurt each other. Make two channels going across. Now here's our diabetic meatloaf and our regular meatloaf. And we are going to take ketchup, put across the top, cover the entire top. This is regular ketchup. I am going to smooth it out with the spoon, make sure all the meat is covered. And I know a lot of people don't like ketchup or sauces on their meatloaf. I don't like to eat it with that on there either. That's why after the meatloaf is baked, I tear it. Cut that part off. But you need it on there to cook it because it helps keep it moist. And it does add a little bit of flavor, just the right. Now this is sugar-free diabetic ketchup for the diabetic version. And again, we want to make sure all of the meat is covered. And we're going to bake this nice and low and slow. I put this in the oven around 2.30 for a 5 o'clock dinner. Bake it slow. Okay, so now that all of our meat is covered, how can we tell them apart once they're baked? We're going to take a toothpick and insert it in the non-diabetic half or vice versa, whichever is your choice. And then the key is to cover it with foil so it stays nice and moist. And that's it. Here we have our diabetic and regular meatloaf together. I hope you like and enjoy this recipe. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and share. Subscribe below. Thank you.